You're listening to Into Neverland, the podcast brought to you by Milton Keynes Dance Theatre, where we will have exclusive interviews and behind the scenes access as we delve into this youth dance company's latest production, Peter Pan. Hi, Harry. Hi, Danny. And we should also say hello to our listener. We are very glad that you are joining us for episode three. Now, that is going very quickly, isn't it? Yeah. I can't fathom how we've managed to do so much admin in that time. <laughs> <laughs> how many times we've plugged our little headphones into Zoom. Oh, uh, yeah. How many times we've sat on immersive view. That's twice. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new one today. We're not in a coffee shop anymore. Yeah. We're in a Halloween-themed outdoor area. But that will probably sound completely irrelevant because by the time this podcast goes out, it'll probably be December or oh, something yeah. like that. Well, that gives you a bit of a time frame as to when we're filming this. It is the day before Halloween. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. We have a spooky episode. <laughs> and you may not be able to see this, but we are actually dressed up as pumpkins. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I mean, I'm sort of dressed up in my pyjamas. I'm dressed up in my favourite podcast, Fleece. But anyway, episode three already. This podcast is going almost as quick as the Peter Pan rehearsals. I know. Because at time of recording, last rehearsal, Gemma told us we are halfway through the process. Yeah, we have seven weeks until show week, which is our eighth week. And then it's all done. After the Pandora process, having to go through so many things to get it on stage, which, of course, everything crossed, that will not happen again for Peter Pan. It just feels like it's gone in a flash of Tinkerbell fairy dust. I know. But something that's happened since our last recording is that Danielle has begun her transformation into Hook. I have. I dyed my hair. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Just to put it simply. Because Jamie, Charlie, who we interviewed last week, brown hair. Rose, who is the other hook, lovely dark brown hair as well. So it looked a bit odd that not only did Charlie grow up shorter, I was blonde as you like. So I just decided I'll take one for the team. I will dye my hair. This wasn't a problem until I brought it up. (laughs) Nobody made her dye her hair. (laughs) Nobody cared. That was the thing. When I walked in with my hair dyed for the first session, Harry and some of the cast didn't even recognise the fact that I dyed my hair. They went, you've got the waffle joggers on. (laughs) And then I went, anything else? And then, oh yeah, you've got your hair dyed. (laughs) Yeah, it just seems so natural. It really suits you. So the joggers are more of an occasion than your hair, to be honest. It just seems like it's always been there. (laughs) But I will say to the listeners out here, if you do come to dance for MKDT, you do not have to dye your hair. No. (laughs) That's only if you want to host the podcast for MKDT. <laughs> it is if you want to host the podcast because we have both dyed our hair for a role now. <laughs> People can't say we're not committed, but anyway, I think we should get on to the guest we have this week. Yes. I have so much pleasure introducing our next podcast guest, the lovely Fiona Cox. One of my favourite pictures in the world is a picture of us from Romeo and Juliet rehearsals. The three of us sat on two chairs, just huddled together. (laughs) No, there's a brilliant one as well of you and Fiona making a cradle position and me in the centre just screaming. (laughs) (laughs) My first encounter with Fiona, no word of a lie, Owen just went, Fiona, push Danny over. Yes, we love that bit. (laughs) So Fiona played Mercutia, my sidekick at Benvolio in Romeo and Juliet. And our very first role was to push Danielle slash Killian to the ground in the street scene. Well, (laughs) when this was choreographed, I was not yet Killian. So you were just beating up a child on the street. (laughs) (laughs) So Fiona played Mercutia in Romeo and Juliet, then came back for Pandora in the role of Athena and... For Peter Pan, she is not in a dancing role, but she has taken on the role of assisting the junior cast and being a huge helping hand with them in terms of choreography, supporting them, and generally being a lovely presence at rehearsal every week. Absolutely. We could talk for hours just about Fiona and how lovely she is without actually ever getting to talk to Fiona. But I'm sure the listener might get perhaps a little bit bored of that. So shall we get in? to 
talking to Fiona. Absolutely. So we are now joined by our third guest of series three and it is the one and only Fiona. Hello. Hi, it's so good to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's great to have you on the podcast. So Fiona, we first met you a long time ago now at the beginning of the Romeo and Juliet process. I would just be interested to know first of all, before that, what was it that made you put your trust in this company that had had no productions before, you didn't know much about them, and you just took this leap of faith into coming to the first MKDT audition. Yeah, I'm telling you now it was a leap of faith. I don't know though, it seemed like some sort of sign because I kept seeing it on Instagram repeatedly and I don't know what Liv was up to with her little advertising mind. (laughs) I just kept getting it and I was like, mum can I go and she was like okay yeah. <laughs> and I remember she dropped me in the car park and she was like okay if you get kidnapped call the emergency services <laughs> I was like I don't think they're gonna kill me <laughs> well we did end up killing you by the end of Romeo and Julia in your role as Mercutio you were I dead know, right I should have seen it coming my mum was right <laughs> but are you glad you took that leap of faith because we're certainly glad you took that leap of faith so glad because it's really different to what I've done before and when I was in the audition majority of the people had never ever met before all from different places everywhere some not even in the county so it was really fun to be thrown together and weirdly enough straight away a sort of company feel was created so that leap of faith was worth it yeah (laughs) just going past the audition and that initial leap of faith you obviously found out you'd got Mercutio what were some of your like favorite early memories of that creation process or how that process built the environment we know now the creation process was really fun because alongside choreographing little bits that we could add in ourselves and really becoming the character we were able to find little similarities with other characters along the way and how some of our mannerisms were similar and we could work that in and we just had so much fun. And you mentioned playing Mercutia and obviously Romeo and Juliet doesn't normally have Mercutia, it's Mercutio, the male version. So how was it for you to take on a character that had been typically the other gender and make it your own? It was very exciting honestly, especially because There were little motifs, if you will, small movements that I did. So the way I exited the stage, I did a turn and a head whip and Jess worked on that character with me so much. And the costume was really cool as well. It really helped me like become empowered (laughs) in my own way. And with this sort of tailoring that we're going on about, how did it feel to have a director making choreography that worked for you as well? Yeah, it felt so good because It's difficult enough to tailor choreography to students that you've known for 10 years, for example. And yet, I've just wandered off the street (laughs) and come to an open audition. And he's like, oh, I am going to put so much effort and so much time into this. It's great. Neoclassical is something I hadn't really touched on before. And yet, it was something that helped you develop both ballet and contemporary to tailor choreography. And it kind of blended you into it but also it helps you develop your character yourself and with the role of Mercutia what were some of the biggest takeaways you took from that role a character doesn't have to just be how it is written in the book and I think it's something MKDT is always put in especially now with Peter Pan as well how it's from a book called The Lost Boy instead of being the Disney version and that's the way it is Instead of being Mercutio, being a male, me having to slick back my hair (laughs) and forget that I ever had any, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. And that's a good thing sometimes. Cool. And what made you want to come back for Pandora? Honestly, it was the want to be back on stage with this company because being in lockdown, the live classes were great because my dance school, we were less proactive online. We were more through just videos instead of live classes and it was excellent to be involved in live classes but it was a little bit crushing not being in the studio with everyone because I love the people in this company so much and I really appreciated being in the audition process again because I knew what the opportunity of Romeo and Juliet had given to me so I just needed to be back and 
Obviously, Pandora was different because we were battling the challenges of having to go on and off Zoom. What do you feel like you learned from that and just keeping going despite all of the lockdown challenges? I learned that dance is not really meant to be done in a very small area. <laughs> Freak. But seriously, it's meant to be projected to people. It's meant to be performed and showed. And especially pieces like what we do at MKDT, it needs to be on a stage with costumes and lights just to give it the essence that Owen and Liv especially as a costume designer is looking for in the first place to really tell the story. And what was some of your favourite highlights? Just like, that was fun. That was really cool. Of course, when you nail it on stage and when you get it just right, it is, of course, a highlight. And I have never not been excited to get on stage. I love the taste of hairspray meal deal aesthetic. <laughs> Show me the brains. <laughs> I'm kidding. Also, there have been little moments of confidence boosting for me because I remember I used to not be so confident about myself as Athena and Jess was someone who really helped with that because she was like you and Georgia both portray different things and you can do it and you can take it in your own way and those moments are always a highlight because I'm quite optimistic when it comes to other people I'm totally up to hype other people and give that enthusiasm but it was nice that people gave some back and where have also given me that encouragement as well. Absolutely. So you came back for Pandora and you played Athena in that show. But this time around for Peter Pan, you've taken on a little bit of a different role. So do you just want to explain to us and the listeners how you're involved with MKDT this time around? When it came to the auditions, I didn't know if I wanted to be a part of the performing side of the show and more of the backstage and helping with choreography and more things like that. So currently I volunteer a good chunk of the Sunday with mostly the junior and intermediate cast and I do thoroughly enjoy it, seeing everyone else's enthusiasm. It's like almost a reflection of mine. I remember what it's like and I know how exciting it is and it's really cool actually to see a performance progress from that point of view. And how does it feel to see other people developing now, experiencing what you sort of did the past two shows? Have you seen growth in members of the cast that you're already watching? For definite. It is a joy to see how far this senior cast has come, especially seeing as I've known them so long. Because I see things every single week that I'm watching that I'm like, that wasn't like that last week or a few months ago or however long ago I first met them. That has progressed so much. And as a dancer, it is sometimes difficult to see your own progress because it's not often that you watch it back in a way that other artists do because you can see the progress in front of you. But I hope they know how much progress they've made. If they don't, then this is it, guys. You've come on leaps and bounds and I'm so proud of you all. Oh. Um, how awesome is it to see the junior and the intermediates and their progress and how they've been getting along. Yeah. First of all, it's dance progress, certain moves that they can't really wrap their head around to begin with. They are really, really committed and they progress really well. It's not only in dance because some people have found it a little bit tricky to interact in such big groups, but you can see in a couple of those little ones who are a little bit more quiet and shy that actually they've made so much progress too in the way that they interact with other people because it can be difficult coming back from lockdown, but I've seen that MKDT can provide the community that can bring people back and make them feel comfortable. And in your new role, assisting the cast with their progress and choreography, how do you feel about MKDT being able to give you the opportunity to come and get involved and volunteer in a sector that you want to focus on? That is great because the company has given me so many opportunities and they give so many people from everywhere the chance to take part in what they do and it's not something that I really considered in the first place but then I was like oh there are people who are behind the scenes do the lighting and not necessarily dance but choreograph and having your input in that can be really fulfilling and something that I really enjoy. So would you encourage people who are into 
anything to do with theatre, so light, sound, anything. We have Ruby Mercer, who does all of our art, and she's awesome at it. And of course, we also had Ella in Pandora, assisting with the hair and makeup team and focusing on that side of things. Yeah, and unlike Ruby, Ella wasn't even a part of the main body dancing cast. She just came in for her own free will, which we love you, Ella. So would you encourage people to come along to MKDT and say, look, this is what I'm interested in. Can I give it a go? It is definitely something that you should do because there are so many ways that you can be involved and not a lot of external people are around for backstage or lighting or things like that. I'm guessing people don't know that's massively possible to get into this company that way, but that's something that I'd like to encourage. Um, You're working with MKDT now. Talk to us about some future plans of Miss Fiona herself. Future careers, maybe what you're thinking. Honestly, I am currently trying to figure that out for myself. From a young age, I had quite a negative mindset of dance as a career being not realistic and it's not going to be a sustainable lifestyle and it's not going to pay enough but once you find that community that you love and something that you have a passion for I would recommend staying there so I may be thinking about taking a gap year because I've gotten in touch with a theatre locally to me about stage management and I'll be able to gain a little bit more experience there but at the same time I love being involved with the teaching and choreography part so i think that in the end performing arts will win me over but in what way to be confirmed and just to really wrap up what we've been talking about what advice would you give to someone coming into an mkdt production for the first time for them to get the most out of their experience first of all do it because however much my mum was a little bit skeptical that this random advert had popped up on my social media <laughs> it is something that i now know very well and love so advice going in is i know this has been the theme of the whole podcast but try it it's going to be very different from the environment that you're probably used to because i can tell you now it was a change for me but in the best way possible i had never been to an external audition before for a company specifically so it was an excellent experience in the first place for that and then what came forth was just superb and that is why i'm still here fiona thank you so much for joining us it has been brilliant to have you on and hear about all the leaps of faith you've taken in your (laughs) absolutely it has been wonderful because i am the biggest fangirl of basically everything to do with this company let's face it however of this podcast it's so cool and i'm sat on the bus in the morning laughing and everyone's like (laughs) there's a bit of law actually this is some podcast law that i have to put here right now and it's so significant fiona pushed me to take a leap of faith in asking owen to do this podcast i did actually i remember that so really we should be putting all our creds to fiona no that's not fair but in reality i am the proud mum that was <laughs> like, yes. and as the podcast fan you'll know what's coming so would you like to plug your instagram that's fiona.sc underscore how exciting and that is all from our chat with fiona but it's now time to hear from some of the other cast and what they had to say about their mkdt experiences so we are now joined by some of our junior cast hello guys if you could just tell us your names and your roles in peter pan my name is sophie and i'm a lost boy my name is robin and i'm charlotte is that how you pronounce it yeah charlotte and a fairy so what's one thing that you've really enjoyed about dancing your role specifically who i'm with and that's energetic yeah yeah i like learning new steps too thank you very much girls girls. so we're now joined by more of the junior cast hi guys hi and it would be great if you could just introduce the listeners at home to your names and your roles my name is Faith and I am a lost boy. My name is Ruby May and I'm a lost boy as well. It's lovely to have you on, girls, and we just wanted to ask what's one thing so far you've maybe learnt from the MKDT process? I've learnt a new like dance move, it's like the Sparkler. Wow. Ooh. I haven't heard of that one. No. I'm going to have to ask Jess about that. <laughs> <laughs> 
confidence. Yeah, cool. So we're now joined by more of the junior cast. If you could just tell us your name first of all. My name's Poppy. We love having you on. We just wanted to ask what your favourite scene has been so far when we've been creating Peter Pan. My favourite scene so far is the orphanage, the time scene, because I like the steps in it. So thank you so much for everyone who contributed. Fiona's still here, so thank you so much for joining us, yeah. Fiona, <laughs> once more. Thank you, Fiona. <laughs> Can't get rid of me yet. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you at home for listening. And before we go, we have just got a few things to say, as always, to get through the mountain of admin. So make sure that if you haven't already, that you subscribe to this podcast to get notified of the latest episode and have them all downloaded to your phone. We would also really appreciate any feedback you'd like to give us. Yes, we love to hear feedback from you. So you can reach out to us on the MKDT Instagram, which is mk.theatre, or you can take the joyous trip to my personal Instagram account, which is xox.danny, that's three eyes with another X. Or you can visit my Instagram and message me on that. That is Harry J. Yo. <laughs> And also, one thing that you can do is buy your Your tickets. tickets. Buy Buy your tickets. tickets for the Peter Pan shows, which are happening from the 14th to 16th of January. We would love to see as many of you there as possible. And we will be back very soon. And until then, goodbye.